What's up, guys? Welcome to a Vibe Call West Radio. Today we have a very special guest, Raleigh. What's up, man? How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing great. great. to be here. Dude, I'm so stoked to have you come down. We've been planning this for a while. And, I, you know, I had you on my first iteration of this podcast. I was telling him off camera that we've grown a lot from the dining room table. So yeah. um, shout out Third Wheel Podcast, first off, for the amazing gear. But so happy to have you come back on, man. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. How's everything been? It's been good. It's been good. Busy summer. And, um... Yeah, everything's been great. Working on a lot of new music. I've been seeing you've been dropping a lot. I also saw that you've been playing a lot of these like festivals, you know, these different like city festivals, which is really, yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing some shows and yeah, it's been a busy summer and it's been good. I want to shout out Jackie, who obviously just, you know, tra full transparency guys is both of on both of our teams, manager, publicist, and um, is a rock star. I know that you've yeah. known her for two years. Yeah, and she's also the reason why we met. Literally, yeah. yeah. So that's awesome too. We met at the Music Swipe event. I think it was at Tao. Yeah, that was crazy. That was almost two years ago. That was yeah. That yeah, was definitely or, that was way. Yeah. That was in the before times. And yeah. um, yeah. So shout out Jackie for, mm -hmm. you know, I know just all the incredible work she's gotten you, which you deserve, and we're gonna get into. Um, I know that. So back when guys, when I was doing my old podcast, it was a little different. Um, we used to do this thing called rooftop bars. Remember when I made you get on my roof and you were, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, oh my gosh, I forgot about that, bro. <laughs> Dude, so I, I don't I don't really like heights. And Grandview has this. It's a super dope concept where we get on the roof and we we make a song and we get on the roof and we perform it. And I just don't like heights, so I was on the roof. And if you see the video, I'm dug in on the roof tiles. Like, I'm literally like this on the roof, trying to, like, still be cool, you know? But, like, <laughs> no, it turned out great, but you're definitely holding on for your I'm life. I'm holding on. You're just like, I remember, that was great, though. Yeah. But he delivered, like, the most... It was just such a like eclectic, beautiful hook. The song is great. I was actually gonna make it a full record, and I just your vocals. I'm happy we finally got a record with Shane when they get into. Yeah, but, yeah. So I know that you performed at the chapel during your birthday weekend up in San Francisco. Yep, yep, yep. And I think it's really dope because this Friday Raleigh's actually coming to perform with me at the Mint, and it's gonna be my birthday show. So can you yes. kind of break down? You know, you said that you performed on your birthday a couple of times. What does that feel mm -hmm. like? What was it like when you're at the chapel? Oh man, it's it's the best. Like it was. A great, great weekend. Um, it was great to be back in San Francisco. I actually lived in San Francisco for a year after I was in college, and um, it was the venue was like a block away from where I lived, so that That's was exciting. awesome too. And yeah, I mean, it was just a great weekend. Great to be back. Got to see some of my college friends I haven't seen in a minute. Um, and yeah, I had a I had a birthday show the year before too in LA, and. Um, all my friends came and it was a party kind of like what you're saying you know yeah. kind of yours i know that's how yours is gonna be too like with all your <laughs> friends like it's just awesome because it's like we're doing what we love it's like i would honestly rather have a show than a party like honestly like that is the party like 100 so percent. i was awesome. saying it's like the best way to kind of celebrate the year where was your show yeah. in la uh bar lubish oh nice okay, yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. actually a great venue for a yeah it's cool show. yeah yeah it was cool yeah i've i played there um a couple times with we found new music and then my friend khaki set up a show and i was like oh this is like my birthday too this is perfect like and i made it like a birthday show so i love it also shout awesome. out we found new music grant owens is a really nice guy yeah um and finally before we get into the full thing again man thank you so much for lending the vocals for gets away yeah man i love the song it turned out beautiful yeah and, like, you really it's it was so important to me for the first thing especially with a song like that like some of my music could be like meditative or more just like mm -hmm. laid back like it was important for me that the first thing people hear is like a very catchy and beautiful vocal oh, so yeah. for you to do that i really appreciate it yeah, and you, man, you know the lyrics on it are so just i don't know they fit with grandview too it was like you you killed yeah them. i just i don't know i feel like you sent me the lyrics and it's just what came out you know it's just the beat just was giving me that vibe and yeah. I know it probably gave you those vibes too which is why you rewrote that verse and once I heard your verse I was like oh, okay I think I know where I want to take this mm -hmm. and yeah and it was awesome that day too recording the vocals there at, so at Paramount and yeah it was great man yeah shout out Eli he really um he hooks it up for for me and it was awesome to have you in there and just like yeah. I, I think it's important I you know for artists listening to when the collaborative process is happening it's nice to like give someone the art and let them create on their own but i think when it's time to lay it down and like get you know maybe creative with the layering and stuff mm -hmm. it was great to have you in person 
Yeah, definitely. I like that. I I like it. I I felt like it was more collaborative when we were in person and we could kind of I could get exactly what you wanted out of it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. It's important. Yeah, and I know in our first podcast we talked about collaborating like and mm -hmm. all of our favorite artists have done that so it was dope that full circle moment so um just thank you again yeah, everybody man. please stream gets away brawley sounds incredible on it paul bill jr as well so great record now guys uh, um before we dive into the full podcast i'm gonna do a breakdown for the new and the old listeners so prior to mm -hmm. raleigh coming on i asked him what his favorite album was he told me it was beer bong and bentley's by post malone what i did then was go on spotify see the songs one through eight based on total number of streams i put that into a tournament bracket and now we're gonna see which song is raleigh's favorite are you ready yeah, it's going to be tough, but I'm ready. Yeah. So why this album? Why specifically? You know, there's there's many, you know, Post Malone albums or just yeah. even albums in general. Why this one? You know, I think it's just I would listen to it so much. I just had to when I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's hard for me to pick my favorite album. Mm -hmm. I won't say this is my favorite. I say I have many favorites. Mm -hmm. This is part of part of my favorites. You know what I mean? And um, I think it's just bangs i guess i don't know like yeah, i don't know what else to say putting, like yeah. it just like it just hits it's super catchy i love his melodies on this on this album um even just looking at those songs they're all just you know hits and just you know he just i feel like he definitely i mean his first albums were album was great too but i think this one really really yeah. hit for me no this is like a moment and he became such a star and yeah. you're right it's there's something impactful when you look at a track list and like you know i haven't listened to this album that much but i'm like i'm like oh i know that song i know that's right like even me who's like a passive listener to post malone i uh, i recognize that he's very talented excuse me very talented yeah. and um amazing so yeah i mean i think there's probably multiple platinum i think maybe yeah. all these are platinum I no, don't when know. I, yeah. no when i was when i was seating, <laughs> when i was seeding these i was blown away by the streaming numbers. yeah like, yeah holy shit like billions <laughs> yeah like, yeah rockstar he, i think has like three billion yeah he's with a he's, b he's awesome and yeah his new sounds dope as well so yeah he's one of my favorite artists so when you asked me i was like yeah let, let's let's do this you one. were quick with it yeah i was like, like let's do this one yeah, yeah i love it yeah. so it's a really fun one so let's dive in let's do the matchup let's do the first one which is going to be rockstar featuring 21 savage and my eyes are really bad Rich and sad. <laughs> yeah, huh? I mean, I think I gotta go with Rockstar just because, yeah, it's it's the it's the classic. But um, yeah, Rich and Sad is also great. I think it's very like vulnerable lyrics. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that one too. But Rockstar is just they're very know, different songs. Yeah, they're very different songs. And but Rockstar is just you know. Yeah, it's it the number is. one song for a reason. It's, yeah, it's also dope, <laughs> it's also dope when like a popular song is actually really good. Like I like that song too. Yeah, and I remember like he posted a snippet of it months before he dropped it really and i remember just me and my friends being like oh this is so fun <laughs> yeah. like all it was it was just like that first line and then the drop and yeah. it's just like so hard like if that was on tiktok it would have blown up yeah exactly it was before tiktok it was yeah, before yeah. Like, when snippets weren't even like and now it's just like people yeah. it's crazy and i actually i saw you uh, i listened to the music lab podcast and mm -hmm. you and you brought up how people at the top like just like chasing like a tiktok song and it's yeah. crazy i think people actually get to People like get deterred of their music based on how people react to a snippet. Yeah, which is I know. crazy to me because like I know it, it's sad it and sad. and it's funny. I had a, this conversation with a songwriter before, and she was talking how um, it was frustrating because she's written a lot of songs that they leave the session loving, and then the the artist will post it on TikTok and it won't do numbers, and then they they won't release it. But they left the session loving it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And then I and I told her I was like, if if I didn't, if I only release songs that blew up on TikTok, I'd have no music out <laughs> yeah, right now. Say by the way, <laughs> oh my god, that's a really good point. I feel like some people, like I know, like um, what's his name? Oh my god, Roddy Rich. That happened too, really bad. Oh, uh, really? Where he put out a snippet and like they fucking like just shelved the album. Which yeah, is like, I mean, you gotta if. I, it just makes me sad, like how many people like leave leave a session loving a song, and then just because it doesn't hit the algorithm right or whatever, like they won't release it. Like, nah, like I love this, I'm proud of this, I'm just gonna release it. Like, it's for me and for my collaborators as much as it is for other people. So you know, yeah, you it's a really good that. sentiment for all the artists like listening. It's it's true. Don't, yeah, I totally agree with you. Awesome. Let's go to the next one, which is going to be better now versus paranoid. Uh, see, I feel like, 
I gotta go better now, but I feel like I'm just gonna I'm going with the hits. I no, don't but know, it's your, but, but it's your gut. Like choose, yeah. choose whatever. I mean, is better now just hits. Like it's, it's a really it's good song. Hit. I like better now it's too. Great. Yeah, it's catchy too. I don't so know. Like catchy. it is so catchy. He, his yeah. such a unique voice and like yeah. aesthetic. No, yeah, he's yeah, he does. It's just that he's just those melodies are just so catchy. Like it's just a melody that just is in your head constantly. He's really good at that. Yeah, for and, sure. You know, to me, melody is so important. So. Mm. Uh, awesome guys so now you guys are kind of seeing the theme of the show i'm going to transition now to some questions for raleigh so cool. candidly guys he's been on my podcast before so this is going to be less of just like a story and it's going to be more of just questions that i have for him in general which you know i know from your perspective is probably nice because <laughs> really cool. when you're interviewing it's like, you, know, you say the same thing <laughs> yeah. so from our previous episode i have a great understanding of the background of your story and how your relationship with charlie heat and busco helped give you the push to fully pursue music while getting your master's degree i want to yeah. ask though with your catalog today if you had to, if you had to cold send Charlie one song in the same manner that you did prior, which one would you want to send him and why? Oh man, <laughs> that's so. That's like a really good question because, oh man, that's such a good question. It, it's interesting because the songs that I sent him, a couple of them were never even released. So that's what's so funny. Oh man, that's so tough. But he told me his favorite is Obvious, which is my most streamed yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, but. I would never think to send him obvious because it's just a acoustic guitar song, which is so because, you know, when I thought of him as being like, you know, the big hip hop producer he is, I just thought, oh, OK, I'm going to send him like my like kind of like pop, um, like rap type songs, you know. So that's what I sent him before. But I guess going with that, I mean, yeah, I, I'd, I'd send him obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he loves that one and he added some strings on that one. So and I know I know yeah. he helped you build that out. You know, what's so funny, guys, is if you listen to what Raleigh just said, going back to our previous conversation about leaving the studio, loving something or like you like you never know what people are going to connect with. Yeah, for sure. For so sure. it's, you know, like don't allow, you know, a lot of times even with me, I'll be like, oh, I think this song from my catalog, people are going to absolutely love. And like, ironically, it might be you know, something about the water that is just deep and instead of mm -hmm. like, you know, tequila tradition that's catchy. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, I love that sentiment of like, you're like, I would not have sent him that, but yeah, it's his it favorite. Would've. Yeah, it's so interesting, right? Why yeah. do you think it's his favorite? Do you think it's the just, because it's an honest and very, like, the, yeah. it's clear. It's, there's a I, lot of I don't know why. I, I, I kind of forget what he said, really. I think he just, yeah, I, I don't know why. It has to be. I mean, I think that that song being my most streamed song is probably for a reason. <laughs> yeah, like, I exactly. don't know. To me, I mean, that's just like, yeah, I mean, honest lyrics, um, catchy and just kind of like, I feel like it's a really relatable song. But mm -hmm. in terms of what he thought, I mean, he just was like, oh, I love this one. But like, it's like that, that. That's what's so funny about the question, because that's why I really don't know, because that's like one that I thought maybe he wouldn't. Yeah. Like, but it's you not know, a tradition. You, know, you never know. I think it's also probably the performance because you it means so much to me. You that, that your too. performance was probably a lot of passion in that, that too. Like it's it's it came straight from the heart, and yeah. that's something I try to like recreate on songs and and try to like remember that was so special about that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually really love that song too. So and um, I, I read that he um, helped put some strings on and they built mm -hmm. it out, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I so you, I was listening to the Music Lab podcast. Shout mm -hmm. out Doug, he's an amazing guy, really nice. Um, I, you know, in the interview you spoke about how you found that there was a correlation between some of the darkest times in your life and the lack of music you were writing and, and yeah, creating. Yeah. Which songs in your catalog do you think directly impacted your mental state? Meaning, are there any songs you've released that you believe are truly healing and cathartic? Ooh, that's good. I mean, obvious. obvious is like, yeah, I was obviously say, after, obvious. Yeah, 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 obvious, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think um, Ordinary Life, I wrote that song um, just about how my life is kind of not ordinary. I work during the day, go make music later, and how my whole thing of like um, basically saying that in order to, if you want a life that's unordinary, then you have to live a life that's unordinary first. Like that that was kind of the whole point of that song, right? So that one definitely helps me kind of feel better and be like, nah, this is what I'm doing. That one's another one that came straight from like, from like the heart. I love that. And I'm, I'm thinking re recently, Grow Up, the song I, I just, just released, released is yeah. actually, that one is actually really made, is something that I, wrote exactly how i've been feeling lately you know as i get older you know people start saying uh you start to think i i don't know if people really say this but my like voice is the, like the voice in my head yeah, say yeah. it maybe more than other people have said it directly to me but it's just like you're getting older maybe you should give up maybe you should stop maybe you should you know 
focus on other things, but it's like, nah, this is what I love. This is my dream. And it's something that I can't stop and won't stop doing regardless of how old I am or what other people might say. So that was something that was really important for me to like get out into the world is for me to tell everybody now nah, this is this is what i'm doing and myself that mm -hmm. nah, i'll never grow up like that's my favorite line actually like um if part of getting older means you have to give up i'll never grow up i love that yeah so you know i think it's um it's so funny that you brought up maybe you're like oh maybe it's just like my voice in my head yeah because it's true <laughs> i think a lot of times especially like if you're if you're like an entrepreneur yeah like if anyone's listening like if you're an entrepreneur if you're like a creative if you're not doing something that's like linear, you're going to have moments where, where you have doubt. And I think oh, for sure. that projection, then you're like, what do other people think? And then right. you start almost creating this story in the head of like, yeah. Oh, they're thinking this about me. That's what's so, yeah. But in reality, it's like everyone's living their own life and everyone's so focused on themselves. That right. Even if they do think it, it's like a fleeting. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, for sure. And that took me a long time to realize. Um, that's something I just realized in the last couple of years, you know, like, what you just said and i still kind of find myself still thinking Same. and it's funny like what 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 you're saying it almost like i'm creating haters in my head totally. when people like aren't even hating like but it's just like <laughs> they're dealing with their bills yeah they're, de they're dealing with their stuff exactly <laughs> but it's like it's almost it's slightly motivate it motivating is. a little bit you know i think it's good to be like oh you know people are against me but not so much so that it deters you from your goal and from keeping keep on going have you, know? you seen like the last dance the last the michael jordan documentary oh yeah yeah, you know, he, yeah he would like create stories yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing he would create stories yeah. about these players to motivate himself yeah he would love like if they would talk trash about him in the media or anything because it just gave him more motivation yeah, yeah exactly that's, that's so hard it's that's so yeah hard. and it's just like it's just it's a thing and like what we do is it's not competitive but there mm -hmm. you need you need to be self-motivated yeah for and sure. that helps with the self-motivation it does it does and and you know it's like it's funny to because you may you, like I really like what you said and I think it should be said again that people are so busy like doing their own thing so that true. they're not they're not worried about you so why are you worried about them mm -hmm. and just focus on your goal and you know just keep going keep it pushing yeah like the reason why I say that is because I always think like you know personally not to get like too real but like sometimes if I'm having trouble sleeping at night and like you're thinking about like other people are doing the same exact thing yeah and yeah. like you're not thinking about them they're yeah. not thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. Yeah, so like we're yeah. all kind of just existing in this, sure. you know, uh, it just, I don't even know, like non, I don't know. We're all, we've created society. Let's not get too deep. I'm not <laughs> high guys, but I, I was about to go on a tangent. <laughs> so but, we created. <laughs> yeah. So we, we live in a society. <laughs> yeah, we, just, we created, you know, it's like we created. <laughs> no, nah, it's true though. It's it true. is. Um, and before we go back to the bracket, you know, our writing process for you and I is so different. Um, Cause obviously you know how to play an instrument. And I've always wondered, and I want you to like kind of break down. So if someone no, just knows how to play the guitar, how do you go about writing a record? Like I would imagine just like I need a beat usually before I write. Mm -hmm. Do you come up with a guitar? You and Boost go together? Like tell me about that process. Because I'm actually just like in interested. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it really just depends. I mean, I think when I first, first, first started um, making songs, it would just be uh, – oh, I like this song and it has these chords. Let me just write a song to these exact chords or let me switch a couple chords around. Yeah. Like when I only know four chords, that's how you start. You just write songs to those four chords and in different order. And then as I've gotten more advanced or whatever you want to call it, not not to Busco's level, but, um, you know, just playing different things and just toying around. Oh, this sounds cool. Oh, where do I want to take it on the guitar first? then melody, then mm -hmm. lyrics. And then and, lyrics, yeah. And Busco will have um, riffs or some chords that he shows me as well. And so it just depends song by song. I, sometimes he'll build, sometimes I'll, well, actually every time it'll be me playing something simple and then him going, yeah, you know, taking adding, it to the next level. So, so that's like what we do, yeah. Is it true that you guys have 100 unreleased songs together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, it's like a... yeah. Like, I wish I had a hundred unreleased songs. I've I've none. You guys get every one I make. No, I'm joking. I mean, no. the thing is, they're not to the point where they're ready to be released. But you know what I mean? It's like with their thoughts. Yeah, their, their ideas and their songs. But but I mean, you know, it's interesting now because it's like you always are gonna love 
the song you just made. Like, that's what I always think. I think like you're always like, that's why I feel like you just got to release it. Because now we have all these songs that I don't think will ever be released because we're so excited about these new ones we made. So they're always just going to be sitting there. So that's why I always like tell other like artists, like release it within, you know, six months to a year of you making it, I would say. Because if you wait too long, you might not like it anymore. And there's always going to be the next song that you love, next song that is better, that you think is better. That's really good advice, actually. I I mean, that... I hope everyone listening. That's actually very good advice because it makes sense. You're you're naturally gonna like hopefully you're feeling like you're getting better with each record as well. Yeah. So you're just like wow, like this is even more. You know, it has more texture, it has more layer. You know, so like you're just gonna want to release and be m- most excited. Mm-hmm. So really good point on that. Yeah. Awesome. Let's now go. We're talking about your music, which is great. Let's talk about another album and songs that are great. Let's mm-hmm. go back to beer bongs and Bentley's. Cool. We're going to do now the three versus the six matchup, which is going to be psycho featuring Ty dollar sign versus ball for me featuring Nicki Minaj. I need glasses. Yeah. Those thank, you, <laughs> Kay- thank you, Kaden for zooming in, <laughs> but wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Those are, those are great. Ball for me hits, but I got to go psycho. Cause that one's just it. You know what's it. crazy? Just like, look at these feature, the feature list. I know. Like right? those, two. those are like heavy hitters. I know. Do you, so break down, so like, what was the deciding factor between Psycho and Ball for me? Uh, What what rang in your heart when you chose that? For me, Psycho is just super catchy, and Mm -hmm. I would find myself singing it more than Ball for me, but yeah. Do you think also, I feel like for this this album specifically, like you go to this album, sometimes you go to albums for certain things. I feel like you Mm -hmm. go to this this album for like hits. Yeah. You don't go to this, you know, that you don't go to it for like the deep records, but yeah, I would say I listen to Psycho more than Ball for Me for sure. But if Ball for Me comes on, I'm I'm not skipping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Not a lot of skips with like this one. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. So Psycho's going on now. Let's guys, let's do the last round for um the. Let's do the last one for the first round, which is going to be Candy Paint versus Stay. Now this one is really hard for me because Stay is I I. Wow, I just realized that that's actually kind of his sound now a little bit more is like that acoustic like sound. That's what Stay is. Yeah. And I feel like it was almost our introduction to acoustic post, which is really cool. That is really I, cool. I just realized that. Yeah. And Stay has like a special place for me because I did like a little performance of it um, with my friends for my friends like going away party. Oh, it's, really? it's one of his mom's favorite songs. So we played it at his going away party for his mom. So oh, that's, that's a good memory with that one. Yeah. And candy but candy paint is just candy paint is just candy you love paint, that one? Bro. i love that one <laughs> this is this the toughest one of this of the first round would you say yeah for sure yeah i i think i gotta go candy paint but Whoa, shout out to the, stay i thought you were gonna go with stay, stay for a second no no i know i love i love that moment and stay has a special place in my yeah. heart but just if we're gonna be objective about it i gotta of course, go yeah. candy paint <laughs> i appreciate it so candy paint's yeah. going on guys i just had to shout out my homie and stay, i love man. that that's, what, a, that's your, a great song what's your homie's name ronnie shout out ronnie yeah and your mom i hope you're uh Hope you, mom, loved that performance, but she was dope. Yeah, yeah. They were at my Troubadour show. Really? Well. Yeah. Yo, so, shout out Ronnie and his yeah, mom. Let's go. Honey. Awesome. We're going to go back now to some questions with Raleigh. Um, as an indie pop vocalist, it's traditional to have many of your songs be centered around love slash relationships, such as your record lover or a friend. I actually love how you broke that down, and I thought it was very relatable to just our like age demographic right now yeah, yeah however mm-hmm. i know you've been writing songs that channel other emotions such as your election song a song about the rich and poor mm-hmm. and even one of your breakout songs obvious isn't a love song yeah do yeah. you find these types of songs fun to make and do you ever intend on releasing some of your more lyrically dense records yeah you know it's tough because i think like i said before like i'm always on to the next ones next one so sometimes if i wait too long for them to be released they might not be released but yeah i have a lot of more like yeah, lyrically dense is a good is a good way to put it. More stuff that's just not about love. I have a lot of those like on deck that I will release. Like, I I don't know like if I'm keeping a score of like oh I have to release this many of this mm-hmm. and this many love songs. But yeah. like I definitely like to sprinkle it in because I think it's important to have those love songs because they're relatable. But I think there's other types of songs that can be relatable too. So I, I and it's also just what comes out and what I'm feeling and what yeah. I want to write about. So 100. percent I like the election one when you were talking. I I, I um, saw you post about that. And I think it's just like yeah, it it it's dope and it's like almost like a lesson with the obvious thing is like you know maybe mm-hmm. not the non traditional one but like it could yeah really yeah for sure move a little bit because sure. I, I I'm just like such a sucker 
like you know my favorite rappers are like you know Kendrick, right, Cole, right. Lupe Fiasco. I love that type of thought provoking yeah. lyric. So I'm yeah, I would listen too. to that record if uh, you had, yeah, yeah. just so you know. Yeah, I got I'm gonna I got some more of those on the way um, for sure. So yeah, yeah, I'm excited, man. Yeah. Um, so now I want to go to you being the opener for the band Fly By Midnight during both their San Francisco and LA shows. Can you break down for me what goes into making a set for your show? How collaborative, excuse me, how collaborative is that with Busco? And can you tell me which of your songs is your favorite to perform? Ooh, yeah. I mean, it's a hundred percent with Busco. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah we definitely, uh, yeah, we definitely kind of had a hard time. You know, a little bit of some discussions, like some stuff I wanted, he wanted. Yeah. Some, but we're weighing our options. You know, figuring stuff out. Um, I think we wanted. It's really tough for us because we have, you know, over thirty songs out. If you count the acoustic ones, I think it's at like almost fifty. But wow. But we have oh, like yeah, so unplugged. many songs. So yeah, it's because the unplugged ones, but we uh wanted to like get all of our different sounds in but it's only 30 minutes so it's like seven songs so it's yeah. like so tough for us to get like everything we wanted in there but we we found a way i think we wanted to balance out you know the slow with the up tempo with the rock with the like r&b yeah. love stuff with like so we tried to like balance it all out it was definitely hard um i think my favorite song was to perform well, again, was obvious because, really? yeah, honestly, because I wrote that in San Francisco when I was in my master's oh, program, sick. like just, you know, about why am I not pursuing music? Why am I just, you know, going to go to school and get a job and not even try with music? So that was really special to play it at that venue um for your friends. Too, right. That. Yeah. That's, right. That's next you pursue to, it. Yeah. Right next to the um where I, where I lived in San Francisco. And then also to play it at the Troubadour, which is a legendary venue, was also just amazing. So that was a full circle moment. Yeah, I heard you say that it was Elton John's first venue that he played in when he yeah, got to Yeah, yeah, that was his, that's crazy, yeah. That, that is was crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's his like where he debuted in America. That's pretty incredible that you had that moment. And then I also saw that you were saying that like there's some records where you like, you wanna show your range. Which one makes you show your range, would you say the most? Because as a rapper, like I never think about that. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking about maybe speed or punchlines. Like that's so that's interesting to me when you're thinking about performance. Which one? Yeah, really push? yeah. I think we have. Um, let's see. It's not fair. Was one where it's like I have a little falsetto, and then I have some times where I break it down a little bit. Like you could say sing rap, maybe a little bit. Like I yeah. break it down in the verses a little bit. You know, just more. You know, vibing with that, and then. Like my song Lost It is more like hard, I feel like, and I can kind of get more lit and, and, and more excited. And yeah, so I just want to show like all different sides of me, but it's kind of tough to pack it in 30 minutes. So I tough. honestly just want like hour sets, but, <laughs> but we got to work up to it. So, <laughs> you know, not, so now I want to do something kind of fun with this. So I want you to imagine that you're main stage Coachella and you get to cover one Post Malone song, one Ed Sheeran song and one song of your choice. Can you give Ooh, me those three? That's tough. That's tough. Oh, I know Ed Sheeran's also a Ed very Sheeran big influence. Ed Sheeran is a big on influence on me. Let's yeah. see. I would do "Give Me Love" by Ed Sheeran. Love that. Um, Post Malone. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of one that's not on this album, because I'm looking at it right now, and, and, <laughs> and like, I'm like, I'm trying to not do one from that. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like it's on that list. But I don't want to. I'm trying to think. You can just stay. <sighs> See, yeah, I was gonna say that, but I was like, okay, I'll just say it, stay. Uh, and then one from any one artist. from any artist. Ooh, let's see. I would do like, a, like Chapel Roan right now, like Good Luck Babe or something. She's blowing yeah. up right now. People love that. her. Yeah, I'm people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah, book it. I love yeah. it. Nah, she's awesome. She's yeah, awesome. she's really having a moment. Yeah, she um, is. I feel like if well. If I could request one, it would be Self Control by Frank Ocean. Mm, yeah, I yeah. I would rock that. Yeah, I like, yeah. love that song so much. Yeah, yeah, that. that'd be dope. That would be you know, dope. I need, to, I need to cover more Frank Ocean, but for me, the, the one that I would always do is the his his first one that I heard. Um, what, what is it? No. Oh, yeah, I love that one, but no, that wasn't the first one. What is it called? Think, Think uh, About uh, You. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. such a good song. Yeah, I, I love covering that one. Yeah. That's a beautiful song, yeah. too. He, he's incredible. I hope he releases music. Frank, if you hear this, please. <laughs> uh, awesome, guys. Now we're going to go to the semifinals. 
Let's rip this. It's going to be Rockstar versus Candy Paint. Which one's going on? I know it gets harder. I'm gonna go Candy Paint. Ooh, so what? Looks, all right, so we now have the the first big upset. Yeah. Why? Why did you choose Candy Paint over Rockstar? Uh, like, why would you throw this song on quicker in your car? I think Candy Paint is more like feel good to me, mm -hmm. and it just like. Yeah, I would just listen to it more than Rockstar. Rockstar is a little dark. And like, it is a little dark, a little, but yeah. A little savage. I, nocturnal a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the good point on that one was I like the yeah, wordplay on yeah. that. <laughs> awesome, guys. Candy Paint is going on now, guys. It is going to be Better Now versus Psycho for the other semifinals. I'm going to go Psycho. Ooh. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Do you like the Ty Dollar Sign feature on that? Yeah. 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 I don't, I think. He never disappoints. He's never. Just... I also think that Kanye is holding him hostage. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I swear. He like, some weird stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I That's don't know so either. Funny. It's really sad, just the deterioration mentally of... Yeah. Yeah. You it's... know, obviously it's so polarizing what he says, but then just like, yeah. I saw this like report recently that his like ex... I guess like general manager of his company has said that he's like addicted to nitrous. Oh yeah, I you saw, saw that? that. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? Is it like, would make sense a little bit. Yeah. Cause that's why, that's why, definitely not good for your brain. Oh my god. I feel <laughs> like it's like just terrible. literally just destroying brain cells. Yeah, it's yeah. Like every whippets, time. Probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's like so Yeah, scary. every time you're killing brain cells. Literally, oh just my like gosh. you're just like I think what it would make sense. What you're just um what's it called? Not even dehydrating is not the right word. I'm being dumb right now. Basically you're just taking away any oxygen from your brain and just like, Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it does. That's what it yeah, does. That's what it does. Yeah, it yeah. cuts off the oxygen to your brain when you when you hit it. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like absorbing like a vape or something. Yeah, like a whip that kids do in college. Dude. Don't do those. I used to. It was not. <laughs> I've done them a couple of times. It's bad. Um, but so I pray for yeah that he's okay and yeah, he stops saying real. crazy things. For awesome. Real. Let's guys before the finals. I I want to bring up a really cool moment that happened with you lately, which is you singing the national anthem at the Angels game. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. Very that proud was awesome. of you for that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That's so sick. Can you, I've always wondered, what does it look like? Like, what does that day look like when you're about to yeah. go and perform for all these people? Uh, let's see. Well, I got there before the game started. I had like a little separate like entrance thing, got like into like the dugout area. Like they have like different suites and kind of like office space almost more like behind the dugouts and then like was like in there and just talking to the people that set it up um and then went onto the field did like a sound check so that was good that helped me get my nerves off I yeah because I got to like sing through it already like I sang through it in the <laughs> office they don't make you do a cold <laughs> no crazy. yeah I know yeah so I sang it like in the office got like the little jitters out then went onto the field got to like see exactly how it was gonna like they have like a speaker placing you or facing you so that you can uh hear yourself that's nice so like got to kind of test that out and um yeah and then came off um kind of chilled for a bit before the game and then got back onto the field and yeah it was awesome it was it was a it was an awesome day yeah had like probably like 40 people there like because i grew up like maybe 10 minutes away from there so yeah yeah i grew up an angels fan so like yeah it was it was awesome and yeah i had like cousins um friends and <laughs> so yeah, crazy. everyone so it was awesome Did you stay for the game yeah i stayed for the game Did they win oh gosh bro this is actually a funny story yeah. i haven't said this yet actually yeah. <laughs> so i go so it's the like ninth inning and we go like back to our seats because just to like kind of watch the end of the game and i sit there and the guy in front of that's sitting in front of us is like hey you did a great job tonight i was like oh thanks man appreciate it we're sitting there it's like the ninth inning my girlfriend's like hey how much uh how much time is left in the game she's just wondering and i was like oh it looks like there's only one out and then they win the next pitch, 
they the other team the rockies hits a home run that ties the game up the guy turns around and he's like you jinxed it i was like i totally <laughs> jinxed it like, it was oh my so God. bad and then it ended up going to extra innings and they lost but i was like we got i was like guys we gotta leave we gotta, <laughs> yeah, so like we, we left after yeah, that <laughs> the legend's gonna spread that i uh, i jinxed it yeah oh dude my it was God. so funny that i was like hilarious. no way <laughs> like literally right after i finished the sentence i'm like yeah one more out and they win Boom, home <laughs> run, like, and, and they tie it up. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's, I fucking love it. But, that. yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool to be there, and, you know, I mean, the Angels aren't good, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it, it, it was, like, it was still awesome to be there, but, yeah, you know, they haven't been winning many games, but, yeah, it was, it was still, still a great a time What's and the great scope? moment. What's the scope of the stadium feel like, though, when you're down there? Yeah, I mean, I like it because – I was facing away from, I was facing towards the outfield. So like there weren't many seats. Got so it. I felt like I could like, I didn't really have to like see a lot of people. So Makes that sense. was good. But like, yeah, I mean, it was awesome being on the field and yeah, I just try to sing it just to make sure I got the lyrics and <laughs> you forget, everything yeah. down and just Luckily was Luckily you know the more. lyrics. The yeah, stuff. yeah, I was focused on it. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I've known it for a while because I actually sang the national anthem in junior high for my little league opening day. Oh really? Yeah, when I was like in like seventh grade or eighth grade or That's something. That's a pretty big so, upgrade. I yeah, would say. yeah, yeah. So so I I've done it before, but not for a while. So Dude, congrats, man. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's that was like awesome. I saw that and I was so pumped for you. Thanks, like, man. Like Appreciate a dope it. Fucking moment. Um, so unique too, and just um, yeah, just overall just fucking happy to see that. Thanks, man. Um, awesome. Now, guys, we're going to make this even harder for Raleigh than the national anthem. He's going to he's gonna have to figure out what the finals is, yeah. which is between Candy Paint and Psycho. Yeah. Raleigh, what is your winner for Vibe Call West Bracket for Beer Bongs and Bentleys by Post Malone? Oh, man. See, like, this feels really tough because I love Candy Paint so much, and I like Psycho a lot as well. I think I actually am going to – pull an audible and go with psycho oh so you, originally you were gonna go candy paint but i remembered that candy paint was actually a single by itself that he just added to the album because it i believe it was a single for a fast and furious movie oh. i might be wrong though i might be wrong no though. but I, I know what you mean but it was a single that was like not part of the album so i think i'm gonna just go with psycho just to be like Pure official with pure with the album exactly i so, love it man yeah i'm gonna well, go guys, psycho psycho wins overall incredible album great bracket raleigh thank you so much for answering my questions before we leave raleigh i want you to plug anything and everything you have please tell the people what you have going on yeah yeah so my song grow up just dropped uh would love if y'all listen to that we got a lot of new music on the way before the year ends um Looking to do some shows, uh, some other really exciting things right around the corner that I can't announce yet. But stay tuned. Not Raleigh on all social media. Stay tuned. And yeah. You just go off script. Screw Jackie. What what, what can't you announce? I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Jackie, I love you. I am joking. Guys, please follow this guy. He's amazing. He's a good friend of mine. Um, I appreciate him being on my record. I appreciate him coming on the podcast. We're going to kill it. The Yee. Mint Friday night. Um, dude, so excited. Thank you so much, man. This is awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I'm going to put all of his socials in the bio. You guys will be able to find his music and everything else. So I want to say thank you guys so much for listening. A Vibe Call West Radio episode done.